Welcome to Off The Record. I'm your host, Marika, and I'm a dietitian, nutritionist, and recovering perfectionist. Join me each week as I bring you raw and real conversations with inspiring men and women discussing matters in health and nutrition that are often swept under the rug. Sit back, relax, pour yourself a cup of coffee or a wine, and enjoy learning from conversations that help us to understand the messiness of what it means to be a healthy and balanced human. Hey everyone, and welcome back to another episode. Now, as I am recording this episode, we are about to head into week 10 in Sydney of lockdown, which is, oh my God, motivation is at an all time low. So I just wanted to start this podcast by saying, if you are feeling unmotivated, if you are feeling down, if you are feeling just, ugh, you are not alone. We are all feeling that. And I guess I just wanted to take this opportunity just to check in and to remind you to reach out and to share um, your struggles with those around you. Um, it it really does feel better when you talk about the things that are going on for you when they are challenging uh, because we can really share that load. So as much as everybody else is going through challenges and as much as there's so much going on in the world. And I think that what we can do is, and what I personally do as well, is you become quick to compare to what everyone else is going through. And you go, oh, well, it's not that bad. And yeah, okay, like, you know, somebody else might have it worse and maybe it's not that bad, but it's still not great. And that doesn't mean that you're not worthy of having somebody listen or having some support or, you know, whatever it is that you need. So please, um, just a quick little reminder to make sure that you are connecting and reaching out for help from either friends, family, um, your therapists, or, you know, calling up some of those helplines. Um, so like the Lifeline, uh, Beyond Blue, uh, or the Black Dog Institute as well, if you are looking for some support. Anyway, today's episode is about calories and calorie tracking in in specific, specifically is what I'm saying. Um, I can't even get my words together. This is the first episode I think I've recorded since the beginning of lockdown. So it's going to be a, a struggle to string sentences together, but um, it's a good challenge for me. But no, what I was saying is we are talking about calorie tracking today. And what I really wanted to do was dive into some of the both research and also both my personal experience and the experience of a lot of my clients over the years um, around the risks and the benefits of calorie counting. And, you know, does it actually serve a purpose? And should we be recommending people do it? Should people, you know, be thinking about doing it if they are looking at changing their body composition or gaining weight or losing weight? And what are the risks and where should we be looking out for these red flags where it's, it is becoming quite damaging and harmful? Um, so I hope you enjoy this episode and I hope it provides you with a bit of distraction in the midst of the lockdown. Um, if you are triggered by calories and talking about calories, this episode may not be the one for you. Um, and that's totally fine. If it's not the episode for you, then please feel free to just skip over and yeah, wait for next week's episode. Um, all right, let's dive in. So to begin this episode, I wanted to first dive into what are calories and macros, because I figure that is a good place to start. Um, so for those who are not familiar with those terms, calories are a unit of energy. So it's our way of measuring energy. So similar to like centimeters or meters is our unit of measuring distance. Calories is our unit of measuring energy. Um, and very similar in Australia, we often call it kilojoules. Um, uh, in America, calories is the predominant term. I tend to use calories. I find that from a number perspective, it just seems to make more sense in my mind. I think the thing that I wanted to mention about calories is that I feel like when it comes to diet culture and social media and just everything that we hear about calories is that there's this perception that we constantly have to be trying to reduce our intake of calories, that you know, we need to be consuming the smallest amount of them that we humanly possibly can. Um, and when you think about it in the term of it being a unit of energy, then you start to think about, well, is that actually a useful thing to do? And I think it was John O'Steedman that um, on his Instagram page recently, he said, if you switch out the word calories for energy and then start using it like that. It's a really good way to sort of, I guess, see the um, disconnect between what you're 
like what you're trying to do and the outcome that you're trying to achieve. So for example, like I just want to eat less energy. I just want to make sure I get in the least energy every single day. And people are saying this when it comes to calories, but if we use the term energy, it really does sort of help us to understand what influence it is also going to have on us as well. So thank you to Jono Steedman for that one. Um, but yes, the, the notion that calories have to be the lowest possible is one that really drives me insane. Um, and something that I have been speaking a lot more about recently, as I've been on my own journey as well of building muscle and increasing my intake to essentially the most I possibly can, um, while still living a healthy and active life. So that's what calories are. And I think that's where I wanted to sort of outline the significance of them. Um, Macros are a short term for macronutrients. So it was really like the bodybuilding community, the sort of gym fitness community that came up with this term macros. Um, and so our macros are, or our macronutrients are our carbohydrates, our proteins, and our fats. And they're the nutrients that we need in the largest amount in our diet. So we consume, you know, quite high quantities of them. Um, and also they contribute to the most amount of our energy in our diet. So the most amount of our calories on the flip side, we do have our micronutrients and that's like our vitamins and minerals, and they don't provide as much energy in our diet. Uh, and we also don't need as much of them. So that's why they're called our micronutrients. Before we go through some of the pros and cons of using these apps to track your calories or your macros, what I wanted to do is share with you um, my personal experience and my journey using these apps and the effects that they had on me. Um, now, I am obviously a dietitian, um, and so my knowledge of calories and um, macronutrients in certain foods is probably higher than the average just because we get it drilled into us so much at uni that you feel like you've got to memorize the calories of everything. Um, so I feel like I didn't ever really use these apps sort of growing up or anything, or like, you know, in my early twenties, it wasn't until, um, I actually went to see a trainer about my hip injuries and, um, he was amazing in terms of supporting me with my training. And I spoke more about him, um, in the episode on my injury. And he, um, when I went to him, I sort of was in this like crisis state. And again, if you remember that episode, I was, yeah, I had a full blown meltdown. And so I went to, um, I went to Luke Lehman and I said to him, I was like, I just need help. I'm in so much pain. I am so unfit. I'm so unhealthy. I was so depressed. I was so anxious, all of these things. And obviously when all of these hap things are happening, your body image does get a little bit skewed. Well, for me, it became a little bit skewed. And what I mean by skewed is I just wasn't happy with my body. I was just felt like I was bigger than what I normally was. Again, I was not fat by any stretch of the imagination, but I just didn't feel comfortable in my own skin. And that was a lot to do with all of the other things going on, not to do with my weight or size or anything. And I fully recognize that. But when I went to him, um, he suggested that, yeah, I do this training program um, and said, you know, why don't you have a look at your calories and then we can sort of see where you're at with what you're eating. And so what we can do to sort of move you forward and to help you get to a level where you feel like that you are eating in a way that is good for you, um, fuels you and can help you reach your goals. So be it fat loss or be it muscle gain, I sort of went through two phases of um, both of those things. Anyway, what I found the really interesting thing was about using um, like a calorie tracking app consistently for what would have been maybe just over six months um, is, or maybe more than that, maybe, yeah, eight months, maybe. Uh, what I found the most interesting thing was, is that to begin with, it seems so harmless and seems so helpful because you're like, oh yes, like I can like, you know, take control of all of these things. And all I have to do is just weigh out a bit of food and, you know, measure this and scan that. And it, it doesn't, it honestly is not that much effort. Um, and if you, and again, this sounds so like boring, but if you eat the same things every day as well, then it really isn't a lot of effort. And in the reality of that, I mean, that's freaking boring eating the same things every day. And so I sort of got in this habit of eating really similar foods and I was tracking them all and it was all going really well. I felt like I was sort of meeting my goals, um, building up my strength. I'd lost a little bit of fat, but not much. I wasn't, again, that wasn't my main priority. Um, and I'd been tracking regularly for quite some time. And yeah, it wasn't until I got towards the end of it when I was like, you know what? 
I'm, I'm kind of bored with eating the same things. Um, and again, I wasn't, I wasn't super strict or regimented. I could never be that kind of person, but, um, I, I was consistent with the, with the tracking of the calories during this time. Cause I just sort of wanted to give myself a challenge and it got to like the yeah, eight months down the track. And I was like, you know what? I don't really want to do this anymore. And I don't really know if it's helping me anymore. Um, and one of the things that I think that really got me to that point was that I sort of had this fear of really increasing my calories. So I was, I'm not going to speak numbers um, because I think that's triggering and harmful for a lot of people. Um, But I was at a certain level of calories and, you know, it wasn't under eating like by any, you know, I wasn't starving myself, Um, but I wanted to build muscle mass and I wanted to get stronger. And, you know, my trainer at the time, and I've had many trainers over the the years since then as well have all said, you know, you need to be eating more, you need to be eating more. And these is, this is how many calories that I think that you should be having. And the fear of actually increasing to those like calories was significant. And it sort of dawned on me that I was like, well, if prior to this eight months of tracking calories, if I was to eat that in a normal day, would I have thought it was that bad? Would I have thought that it was a lot of food? And the answer honestly would have been no. It was only because I was so used to being so hyper aware of everything that was going into my diet and tracking everything that I automatically then jumped to the assumption that, well, to increase by such a significant amount, it can't be a good thing. And it's only going to lead to fat gain. And that must be the worst thing ever, which again, obviously it's not at all. Gaining fat is is not something that we should be afraid of. And I have certainly gained fat in this journey um, from those days to now. And I feel so much stronger and healthier for it. And I think that it's, again, it's diet culture. It just feeds into this, like this notion that we have to be eating as little as possible and as boring as possible and as tasteless as possible. And we must have this tiny, perfect figure. Um, and the calorie tracking for me, really did feed into that, but it was so subtle that I didn't think I noticed it until it was time to stop doing it. And that's where I think I've noticed as well with a lot of my clients over the years is where people do become unstuck is that, you know, it might be working. Like, I don't, I don't even know if that's the right word, but it might be working for them at the time. But as soon as it comes to even like going out for a dinner or, um, yeah, going away for a weekend, there's this huge anxiety around, well, I won't be able to track those things or I, how do I track if I don't know how much oil they've used in my stir fry out at the noodle place or, um, you know, just this anxiety that people will have around not being able to accurately track their calories. And I really do think that that's where it becomes quite harmful and damaging is where you can't, you can no longer enjoy your life and you can no longer enjoy going out to dinners or you can no longer enjoy just having a day where you sit on the couch and just eat whatever you want. Like that's part of life. Like yesterday, I literally sat on the couch for half the afternoon watching The Office eating a bag of Violet Crumbles. And it was amazing. Like there's not much to look forward to in life right now. And sitting on the couch eating chocolate was so damn good. So I think that that's where it really does become harmful. Now, one thing that always comes to my mind when we're talking about calories and macros and tracking calories is this whole notion of calories in calories out or being in a calorie deficit. It's, I guess, become really trendy and popular in the nutrition and weight loss sort of industry at the moment to be really talking about a calorie deficit. Um, And it's something that is becoming, I guess, more mainstream in uh, an approach to weight loss. And when we talk about like a calorie deficit, what we're talking about is eating an amount that is less than what your body burns. So let's say, you know, for you to just live and breathe your cal- your body burns, let's say 1400 calories a day. So that would be what you could call your BMR. So your basal metabolic rate. Then let's say you do, I don't know, 8,000 steps a day. Um, and that would be a certain number of calories on top of then the 1400 of your BMR. And then maybe you do a workout as well. So again, that might be another couple of hundred on top of the BMR. So your total energy expenditure for that day, let's say might be 2000 calories. So in order to then eat in a deficit, a calorie deficit, you'd have to eat less than 2000 calories. Um, And then that is how you then lose weight. 
Now, the whole equation is so much more simple in theory than it is in practice. And I, um, there's a lot of like arguments going on on the online space about this is like, is it like, is calories in calories out the right thing? Or is it, you know, is it just that you have to eat in a calorie deficit and you'll lose weight? Technically, yes, that is correct. But that doesn't, I guess, also give credit for all of the nuance that goes into um, what makes up your energy consumption and what makes up your energy, um, ex, ex, what's the right word there? Um, the expenditure of your energy. Um, again, I told you this was going to be a rusty podcast. Um, but uh, yeah, so there's so many fa- factors that go into um, your expenditure and your intake of calories. And these things include, say, for example, like dietary fiber. You don't actually absorb all of the calories that you consume when it comes to foods rich in dietary fiber. And then the other thing is, you know, thinking about your menstrual cycle, there's days in your cycle where you burn more calories because of the part of the cycle that you're in. Um, you know, when it's different temperatures outside, you have a slightly different change in the amount of calories that your body is burning. So it's not an exact science when you're doing these estimations, even the estimations around like your basal metabolic rate are inaccurate at best. Like they're, they're an estimate. Um, and they're not meant to be used to follow so strictly where you're literally like, putting all of your energy and attention into nailing these things perfectly. And I think that that's where I guess bodybuilding culture has probably let us down a lot. I mean, there's probably a lot of ways that bodybuilding culture has let us down, but I think that's one of those things, those dangers is that this idea that we can be perfect when it comes to, you know, nailing the exact amount of calories we need today versus tomorrow versus the next day. Um, when in theory, yes, calories in, calories out is correct and that you do need to be in a calorie deficit to lose weight or in a calorie surplus to gain weight. But like I said, so many other factors uh, play into that equation as well. So it it is not as simple as that. So one of the questions that came up on uh, my Instagram today when I said that I was recording this episode was, do you have to track calories then in order to lose weight or to change your body composition? Now, I want to start this answer by saying that a woman's or even a man's, a a person's priority in life is not to lose weight, is not to exist in the smallest form of their body and to take up the least space on this earth. It is not to consume the minimal amount of calories possible and to be constantly striving for weight loss. That is not why you were put here on this planet. And that should not be your life purpose or what you spend most of your energy on all day, every day. To answer the question, though, you absolutely do not need to track calories in order to lose weight or to change your body composition. And I guess the the best example I have of this is that let's think about before these apps were a thing, like people were losing weight and changing their body composition well before these apps were ever invented, well before calorie tracking was ever a thing. So it is absolutely possible to do so without an app. It is, again, that the culture has sort of led us to believe that this is the best and the most effective way to lose weight or to change our body composition. Now I am going to talk about the pros of using these apps and where they can be really useful because I'm not entirely against them. I just think for, particularly for my audience and my audience being you guys, um, the, the dangers of them really do outweigh a lot of the benefits. And so we will talk about those benefits for the individuals where it might work and how you can also try and minimize the harm from them if that is what you choose to do. Um, but yeah, keep in mind that I truly believe that for both myself and for a lot of my audience that not using them is likely to have more benefits than um, using them. And we'll talk about later in this episode as well is what you can do instead of calorie counting if you're trying to focus on your health and your um, body composition. So what are some of the warning signs if you are currently tracking um, that you can sort of be aware of that might be a sign that you need to take a break from calorie tracking? Um, These would be like I mentioned earlier, that reliance on feeling that you need to track every meal, that you need to track everything, that, you know, you can't, you know, eat something without weighing it first or without checking the package first. These are warning signs that you're really quite rigid in your approach to your eating um, and that some flexibility would serve you mentally really well. 
The other thing is guilt. So if you're experiencing a lot of guilt around not tracking calories. So again, if you're going out for a dinner where you can't track that day or you can't track that evening, sorry, um, or you're going away for a weekend, if there is extreme guilt around not being able to do that, then that would also be another warning sign. And what I'd suggest doing if you are somebody who thinks that calorie tracking is beneficial for you, but you might be starting to see some of these warning signs is to just take a break from it for a week or two weeks and to give yourself that time to eat a bit more intuitively and to get more in tune with your body. And I guess that's where one of those harms of calorie tracking does come in is that we learn to not trust our body. So when we are relying on an app to tell us when we should eat or how much we should eat, we really do disengage with our own body and our own intuition when it comes to how much we should eat and when we should eat. And like I said earlier, is that that does change day to day. And typically when we are calorie tracking, we are being rigid around the same, like the same amount or the same volume or the same, you know, calorie um, consumption every single day, which is not practical when we think about what a normal appetite is like, where it does fluctuate day to day. The other thing that I think is important to mention when it comes to these apps is that they are not that accurate. So even if you are using them, it's again, only providing an estimate. So if you think about, for example, my fitness pal is an atrocious example of this because anyone can submit um, a product into my fitness pal by just simply typing in, you know, the different calories, carbs, protein, fats, and then it becomes a product. So you know, I could just mistype in something and it would be completely incorrect. So I think that um, the accuracy that we think that we're getting from these apps is far less than what we actually are getting. And then even when it comes to products, like there's a range where, you know, if you look on the label of like a chip packet or whatever, there's a range of acceptable, um, I guess, variance between um, the calories that they report. So, and I'm going to say this wrong off the top of my head, but I feel like it's like 15 to 20% even where that's still legal for them to be saying that, you know, let's say there's 500 calories in the packet. They can have up to a 20% variance. And again, don't quote me on that because it might not be that much, but there's certainly a level of variance that they're allowed to have as a food manufacturer um, from a labeling perspective. So don't believe that it's exact precise science when it comes to even tracking your calories. And I know we discussed before, it's definitely not an exact precise science to know how many calories we are consuming. I'm sorry, we are burning. um, And also how many we do need on a day-to-day basis as well, because that is such an individual thing. And again, the one thing that really pisses me off about these apps is the underestimation of um, how many calories you need each day. So like if you go on there and you say you want to lose a little bit of weight, these apps will punch you out at 1200 calories, like without even thinking twice about it. And that's just for an active individual, for somebody who's exercising, for somebody who is, you know, trying to have a healthy menstrual cycle for somebody who is not a child, like that's not a lot of food. So I think that the, these apps always underestimate in order to, I guess, like make you see results and then therefore make you think that it's working. But when in reality, all it's doing is starving you, um, and then making you potentially binge later on because you have been so starving for a day, a week, a month, whatever it is. Finally, when it comes to the risks, this is where I think that the research really does sort of weigh in here is that there definitely is a correlation and an association between people who use these apps and um, uh, eating disorders and restrictive um, thoughts and restrictive behaviors around food. So um, the research definitely does lean towards the fact that they are more harmful than beneficial. Um, but I'm going to go into now some of the reasons where they can be quite useful and they can be beneficial. Um, but even with, even when I'm talking about, I kind of almost don't want to sort of talk about the benefits here is because I think that it does need to be taken with a grain of salt in that we're not doing this forever. Like if you are going to be doing, um, if you are going to, you know, if, if you do fall into the categories that I'm about to mention, and if you do think that it is beneficial for you, that you're aware that this is not a forever thing. And at any point when you feel like you're, um, 
you're bound to calorie tracking, that it's, it's consuming you and it's taking over you, that's your signal to stop. Like you need to be taking breaks from these things. So even when I do talk about any of these benefits, as soon as they become all consuming, the benefit is gone. So um, yeah, let's dive into the benefits. Okay. So instances where I think that um, calorie tracking can be useful is um, in bodybuilding and in athletes and not in all circumstances for these, but in specifically in athletes and bodybuilders who um, are trying to really hit body composition goals for training purposes. So if they have been told that, you know, for their sport or whatever it is that they need to hit a certain weight or they need to um, yeah, be performing in a certain way and that is going to mean that they're going to need to control their weight in some way, that it can be really useful there so that they can have that rigid control over it. And again, these things should only be temporary because with all things like bodybuilders, with athletes, they should all have an off season where they do um, find some more flexibility in their eating and their nutrition. So um, yes, it can be absolutely useful in those circumstances, but where I'm going to sort of go into, well, um, what can we do to minimize the harm here? I think that the primary thing I would say that whenever calorie tracking is recommended, I personally believe, and I don't have research to back this up, so this is just my opinion, but I personally believe if you're going to be tracking um, calories and macros or whatever it is, that your body image, like if your body image is poor and you're doing those things, personally, in my experience um, as a dietitian and working with people, that doesn't end well. So I think if you have a really good like if you have really good body image um, and your self-esteem is amazing and that you are doing this purely for, I guess, like a numbers game, like, you know, you are an athlete and you need to hit certain things, then um, it doesn't have as much of a detrimental effect uh, in, again, my experience that I've had. I don't have research around that. So that is personal opinion only, um, but that's what I've seen. The other area where... I do believe that there is some value in understanding um, calories and potentially even tracking calories for a short period of time is in an individual who has zero um, like idea around the energy density of foods. So for example, you know, if listen, I'm going to use like my dad or someone as an example, if, if my dad was eating, um, so let's say he was just having his normal three meals per day um, and he'd have a few snacks throughout the day, uh, but didn't really know what those snacks were. Like, so he works in a hospital, so he's having pieces of cake every now and then, a couple of Tim Tams, you know, all the typical things that are at nurses stations and those sorts of things. So if he wanted to um, become aware, he might do some calorie tracking for a short period of time to realize that what he might find is that okay, his main meals are, you know, really nutritionally balanced, a good amount of calories, protein, carbs, fats, um, but his snacks are actually equating to more than all of his meals combined. Um, so I think that's where it can be useful to bring awareness to where the energy density is coming from your diet. But in saying that, that doesn't mean that you actually need to track consistently in order to do that as well. So if you just become aware of the calorie density of some of these things, then you are a little bit more, I guess, educated on making informed decisions about when you choose to have those or not, depending on your goals. Now, I'm not saying foods are bad or foods are good because that is not the morality of food is not what I'm talking about here. And I, again, you guys would all know, believe that cake is an essential part of every diet or chocolate is probably more the thing. Um, so it's not about excluding those foods, but rather knowing that, yeah, like if you ate a blueberry muffin from um, muffin break for breakfast, the energy density in that, essentially from a calorie perspective, you might be able to have a massive bowl of oats plus like a large cappuccino plus a banana plus, um, I don't know, mini chocolate bar, all for the same amount of calories that was in the blueberry muffin. And I think that's where it can be useful if you then don't apply the diet culture, um, the diet culture mindset that that makes the blueberry muffin bad. Um, 
it's more so just going, oh, okay, like if I want the blueberry muffin, that's cool. Um, but for like my Monday to Friday, every day of the week, I know I'm going to get so much more bang for my buck in terms of energy and filling and nutrients and everything like that if I have all of these other foods that are going to keep me so full. Um, so, yeah, I think that's where it can be useful. But I think on the flip side of that, I'm, I'm not really talking to these benefits very well. <laughs> so I think that shows you where I stand on it at the moment. Um, but what was I going to say? I've lost my train of thought. I know what it was. Um, what I was going to say is that you can't unknow what you know about calories as well. And I think, um, and I'm sure many dietitians, um, I've heard from uh, several that do struggle with this or have struggled with it at some point in their life is that if you know the calorie level of all foods, it's really hard not to apply that bias. And then I guess that black or white thinking that, oh, I should always go for the low calorie option. And I think for me, that's been a massive unlearning as well is that this idea that we always have to choose the low calorie option and that's the better option. That's not true. That does not make it the healthier option. That does not mean that, you know, we still need calories to survive and we need quite a few calories to survive if we want to actually live a healthy and active life. So um, just because you know the calorie value of food, you need to make sure that you're not then automatically applying this notion of lower calorie equals better and that I should only be chewing, chewing, choosing the low calorie option of everything that you buy or that you eat. Okay. And the final, um, I guess, benefit or scenario where I feel like it, it can be helpful is in weight gain. And again, in some individuals, in those recovering from an eating disorder, um, it would not be advisable. Um, but if you are looking at healthy weight gain, um, just again, from a positive mindset, from a not disordered eating perspective, it can be really useful to help you see that you are eating enough and that you're eating, um, you know, if you're trying to gain weight, if you're, you're trying to increase the amount that you're eating either week by week or month by month, you're able to keep track of that in terms of making sure that each and every day you are hitting a certain minimum amount of calories uh, and that you are then able to actually incrementally increase that week by week. So I think that, I think that's where I found it really useful is when I started to really increase my calories, I could actually make sure that I was doing it each day. Um, but again, you've got to come back to making sure that there's no guilt around those days where you don't track or making sure that you are able to take breaks from the app as well. I think my final piece of advice here is that if you feel like that you've been bound to calorie tracking for a long period of time, know that there is another option and that you can step away from these apps and it will take time for you to, I guess, unlearn the habit of using them. And my first suggestion is to delete the app if you know you are looking to get away from it. Um, and like I said, it will take time for you to stop um, just unconsciously doing it, but it will eventually happen. And it's really important that you don't apply morality to food. So what I mean is by saying that foods are good and foods are bad, because that is what's going to continue to feed into this cycle of feeling like that you need to be restrictive around the types of foods that you have and therefore restrictive around the calories and um, the, yeah, the nutrient density of the foods that you're choosing. And finally, I wanted to say that if you ever are going into either a program or a health professional where they are suggesting to um, track calories, that doesn't mean what they're saying or doing is wrong or bad. And I certainly have used calorie trackings like you now know myself, and I've used it with some clients before in the past. It is not my go-to by any stretch of the imagination, but it doesn't mean that it's bad, but you need to work out whether it's the right thing for you or not, because the person who's telling you that, be it through an online program, um, they don't know you at all. And if it's a health professional or a coach or someone that you've gone to see, they only know a part of you. They don't know what's going on in your brain and your your makeup and all of these things that play into your mental health. So I think that you really need to have confidence in going, okay, is this the best approach for me? And really trying to push aside the notion that fat loss is the number one thing and I must achieve and I must do it. Because when you narrow yourself into that, that corner, when you push yourself into that corner, you think that you have to do these things in the name of fat loss or weight loss. And in reality, 
what most people look for when they're looking for fat loss or weight loss is they're looking to feel more confident. They're looking to feel more energetic. They're looking to live life more fully. And you don't need, or actually it it gives you the opposite effect for a lot of people if they are having to be restrictive on these apps and feel like they're bound to them. So know you, know your body and be confident in making a decision around what to do with this. And if you, if calorie counting is the thing for you, and if it works really well for you, that is absolutely fine. Just make sure that, you know, you do have those breaks from it and know that you don't need to feel guilty for not using it as well. So I hope you enjoyed that episode. I feel like I always need a big drink of water after recording a solo episode. Um, But thank you so much for tuning in. I, as always, would love it if you shared this on your social media and tag me at Marika Day. Don't forget to subscribe or follow on your podcasting platform of choice so that you do not miss an episode. Um, You can also sign up to our mailing list on my website, marikaday.com, to make sure that you are notified about each episode as it comes out. If this episode has triggered anything for you, you can contact the Butterfly Foundation National Helpline in Australia on one 334673 4673 to um, chat about any body image or eating disorder concerns that you are having. Next week's episode, we are going to be talking a little bit further about eating disorders and where the line is drawn between um, disordered eating and orthorexia and healthy striving for goals. So stick around for that episode next week and I'll chat to you guys then. 